Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to take this horribly washed out, terrible image and process it in Affinity Photo. I started out with something like this, and I end up with something that looks like this. Those of you that follow my videos know that I've been processing this image in a number of different applications. Uh, the first video I did, I processed it in Luminar 3, then I processed it in Lightroom, then I did a video processing it in Capture One, then in On One Photo Raw 2019, and finally, about a week ago, I processed it in Alien Skin Exposure X4. And to tell you the truth, I was done. I didn't want to look at this image ever again. But I received several messages, um, at least five or six, from different people asking me if I could process this image in Affinity Photo. So this is officially the last video of me processing this horrible image. And a little background on the image itself. Um, it was shot at high noon. Uh, it was very warm. It was approaching 90 degrees. And as you could see, it was super hazy. So it really wasn't the best conditions to be taking a landscape photo. But as you'll see, we'll be able to salvage it and come up with something decent as I did in those other applications. And in the description below this video, I'll have links to all those videos. So if you want to see how I salvaged it in those applications and what I came up with, you could see it. Now, I'm not ever trying to make it look like it looks like I, I'm not trying to make it look the same in every application. So you'll notice every application looks considerably different. But at least it looks acceptable and um, at the very least in in some instances I think it looks pretty good so um, we'll do that here we're gonna do this in affinity photo um, one thing that I'm not sure why I didn't do it sooner and I apologize for not thinking of it till now but you're welcome to have this raw file so in the description below this video there'll be a link uh, you could download the raw file for free and practice uh, with the application that you use and see if you could salvage this horrible shot. So, those of you not familiar with Affinity Photo, it's really more akin to Photoshop than it is Lightroom, all right? So it's very similar to Photoshop and when you open a raw file in Affinity Photo, it opens up in what they call the Develop Persona. The Develop Persona is equivalent to Photoshop's Adobe Camera Raw. So we're gonna start out here in the Develop Persona and then we'll open it up in the photo persona. And the photo persona is more like actual Photoshop. So let's start. To begin with, I like to crop early in my workflow. It doesn't really need any cropping, but it is crooked, so I'm gonna straighten it. I'm gonna to go to the crop tool to do that though. I'm gonna go off the image to the right and you can see the um, cursor turns into that double arrow. And I'm simply gonna click with the left mouse button and push up a little bit, just to eyeball it and straighten it by eye. Right about there. Now I need to get rid of these blank pixels. So I'm going to go to the mode and I'm going to keep the original ratio. And I'm just going to grab this handle here and pull down to get rid of the pixels on the top and right. And then I'm going to go to the bottom and push up to get rid of those blank pixels on the uh, bottom and left. And I think that looks pretty good. Now to commit that crop, just go back to the hand tool, the magnifier tool. And there's our crop. Now, those of you that watch my videos know that when I process an image, I look, what does it need most? Like if the shadows are really dark, I jump right to the shadow slider and open up shadows. In this case, it's super hazy, so I need to at least minimize this haze. There's really not a haze or dehaze slider in Affinity Photo, but we could do it some other methods. We're going to go to Tones, and we're going to go to Curves. And you know in some other applications I used the Tone Curve to get rid of haze or at least minimize it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to this lower left where the blacks and shadows reside and we're just gonna push this this way. Then we're gonna go to the upper right where the whites and highlights reside and we're gonna push that that way. Next we're gonna put a point right in the middle where the midtones are and I'm going to do a gentle S curve to this, which adds contrast. And whenever you have haze, if you add contrast, you'll generally start cut through that haze. So we're going to go here 
and I'm just going to pull down. So I'm making the darker parts darker, and then I'm going to go up here and push up, and I'm making the lighter parts lighter. At least theoretically I am. And it's still not quite right, but you know, we're getting there. This is part of the process. So that's that. We're going to jump back over to the basic tab and we're going to start affecting exposure here. And a lot of people are confused uh, on any application that has an exposure slider and a brightness slider. What's the difference? Well, exposure will increase or decrease the brightness of every single pixel in the image equally. Brightness, on the other hand, will increase or decrease the uh, exposure of the mid-tone pixels more so than it will the highlights or shadows. So if you have very bright highlights and or very dark shadows, but your mid-tones are kind of muddy, you're probably better off moving the brightness slider as opposed to the exposure slider because the brightness slider won't affect the highlights and shadows as much. In this case, the mid-tones are really muddy and I got some bright highlights over here. So I want to not affect those highlights as much. So I'm going to move brightness to the right. Then I'm going to move the black point to the right. I'm going to push exposure up. So mainly I got to kind of adjust these three sliders, kind of bounce between all three to try to get something that looks halfway decent. And, you know, unlike an application that has like a haze or dehaze slider where you just move the slider and you cut through the haze um, in one step, with Affinity Photo and some of the other applications I use, it's kind of a process. So we're still working on the haze. The haze is still there, but by the end, we should get rid of it. All right, so that's not too bad. What I'm going to do is jump down to Shadows and Highlights, and I'm going to open up the shadows a little more. So I'm kind of flattening everything out a little bit here. And next, I want to... Um, I wanted to affect the white balance a little bit. So I go to the white balance tab right here. But what I think I'm actually going to do is use the white balance tool. It's this tool in the lower left in the tool well. I'm going to click on that. And you can see the tur cursor turns into a crosshair. Just click anywhere in the image that should be gray. Um, and this, like, I don't know if that's slate or shale or whatever it is. This wall here, that's pretty, you know, not super color, colorful. So I'm going to click there. If you don't like where you clicked, like just try clicking in a different area and you could just keep clicking around and affecting the white balance. So I'm going to click right there and tell you the truth. It's, I've seen this image now so much and fiddled with it in so many different applications. I've kind of forgot what the actual scene looked like uh, as far as white, white balance and color. But we'll leave it there. I reserve the right to come back in and readjust that. We're going to go to contrast slider and move contrast to the right. That will help still cut through some of that haze. Move clarity to the right. The clarity slider in Affinity Photo is really good. So that helps a lot too. We're going to move saturation to the right. I think I'm going to move vibrance to the right a little bit too. See what it does. So it's coming along, coming along. I'll uh, go to lens. And it found the lens. In the description below this video, I'll have all the gear I used listed along with the camera settings and exposure info if you're interested. Um, let's jump over to details. I am going to add some sharpening. And it's shot at ISO 64. There's really no noise to speak of at all. So I'm not going to bother with noise reduction. I'm going to go to tones again. I'm going to try just pushing that a little bit to the right. I think that's... As good as right now, as good as I could get it right now in the develop persona. I think I really need to jump over now into the photo persona to further process this image. So to save basically these settings and then go into the photo persona, persona, go over in the top left hand corner. This icon right here is photo persona. Click on that and it's asking you to commit these changes or these develop operations that you did. Just click develop. And now it's jumped right over into the uh, photo persona, but it's got to apply these uh, adjustments that I did. So that's going to take a second. And this is laid out very similar to Photoshop. Over here on the left, we have all the tools. Over here on the right, we have these different tabs along the middle point here where we have the adjustment layers. 
than the actual layers. And then effects, you could do styles, you could do stock images. Up here on the right are the color swatches and things that um, mainly the brush, different brushes you would use and whatnot. Now, what I'm going to do is, I, you could see here's layers, there's our background layer now. And I'm going to add an adjustment layer. And I really want to adjust the, um, the tone a little better. So I'm going to go to Levels. And I'll bring this up so we could better see it. And you can see our histogram is kind of a really odd shape. And we have a lot of real flat area over here where the highlights are. And then in the shadows area, we have a lot of darker pixels. But what I really want to do is, is move this bar this way and move this bar this way. And it will add some contrast to the image when I do that. And to do that, I'm going to jump right to the white level. This is this bar over here. So I'm going to take this and move this to left. And you can see as I do that, kind of brightening the image up, right? Now I go to this black level, I move that to the right, and it's going to darken that. So I'm making the darks a little, the darker areas a little darker, and the lighter areas a little lighter. And then I'm going to go to gamma. And if I move this to the right, it's really, it's kind of like a dehaze in a way. If I move that to the right, it's going to cut through that haze a little more. And I don't need to do anything with it. I'll put black level or I'll put white level. But I kind of like what that did. So there's levels. So we added levels. Now if we go to the layers, you can see there's the background layer and there's our levels layer. And if I turn the levels layer off, there's before and there's after. Before, after. So you can see it really helped cut through that haze a little bit better. Now what I would want to do... Um, I think I want to just go to Vibrance. I do, I do want it a little more colorful. Not like that, you know, just I'll bring saturation up a little and I'll bring Vibrance up a little, just a little bit. And now if you go to Layers, you can see I have that layer there as well. And there's before, after. So it's kind of not as obvious. There's before and after that one. I'm going to go back to the adjustment layers. Now what I want to do is I want to brighten up that waterfall, but I don't want to brighten anything else up. And you know I did that in some of the other applications as well. So what I'm going to do is add a brightness contrast adjustment layer. And if we go over to layers, you could see it's right here. And what I'm going to do now is bring brightness up. And you can see it's affecting the entire image, but I only want it to affect the waterfall. So what I need to do is mask away, mask it away from everywhere else. And it comes with a white mask. When you have white, the adjustment comes through 100%. So if I make this mask black, this adjustment won't allow, be allowed to go anywhere where black is. So to make this mask black, and we have this white mask now, just to invert it. And to invert it, make sure you're clicked on it, then hit with a Mac, hit Command-I. With a PC, hit Control-I. And you'll invert that mask to black. And you can see now that when I adjust these adjustments, it's not adjusting anything because it's being blocked by the black mask. What I need to do now is paint white on the mask. So what I'll do is get a brush tool. Hit the B key for the brush tool. It's over here in the tool well. I'm going to make sure that opacity and flow are at 100%. And I need to paint in white. So go up here where the color and where these two swatches are. I want white to be the foreground. So then I'm going to be painting in white. And you could use the bracket keys to adjust the brush size. Left bracket key smaller, right bracket key larger. And I'm just going to paint on the, on the waterfall. Simple as that. Now, when I adjust with brightness, you'll see it's only affecting the waterfall because that's where I masked it in. So I just want to brighten it up a little bit. Okay, next, um, I want to darken this area over here. So I think I'll get an exposure adjust, adjustment here. And again, I'm just going to bring this down. You see it's, it's darkening everything, right? Well, we don't want that, of course. So we're going to go back to our Layers tab. We're going to invert this mask by hitting Command-I, because I have a Mac. If you have PC, again, you hit Control-I. Now it made that mask black, so this, this adjustment isn't doing anything. Well, I need to paint in black. 
So I have a brush, or I have to paint, I'm sorry, in white. So I have a brush, I'm painting in white. I make sure that um, hardness is all the way down. I want a really soft brush. And I'm going to hit the right bracket key to make it larger. And we'll come in here and darken this area. Now it looks horrible right now. But don't worry. Because what we're going to do is just kind of just darken it a little bit. Just something like that. Just darken it a touch. There's before, there's after. Just kind of brings it down a little bit. And I think it makes it look a little better uh, throughout the image. Now I could darken up in here too. Let's try that. Yeah. Yeah, I think I like that too. Darken those uh those areas as well. And I think that looks pretty good. And to tell you the truth, I might be done. What I what I hmm. What I might do, I'll add an HSL, although my experience with this is it sometimes doesn't always um, work, you know, I don't know, the way I expect it to work. Let's put it that way. I'm going to put saturation up. You can see how it's affecting. I'm on yellow, so it's affecting mainly the yellows in the image. Bring luminosity up. Center more towards green. I'm going to bring... Uh, saturation up on green as well, but bring luminosity down. So we go back to our layers. I'll turn that off and on. See, there's before, there's after. So I'm affected the foliage a little bit there. And tell you the truth, I don't, I don't like that adjustment. So I'm just going to delete it. Oops, didn't want to do that. Go delete it. And I think I'm done. I really do. I think that is um, is decent. I think that looks pretty good. So that is uh, this horrible image adjusted in Affinity Photo. Took us a little longer maybe than some of the other applications. I don't know. But again, uh, in the description below this video, you'll find links to all the other videos. So you could see the job I did in those videos. And people ask me what my favorite was. And I'd say my favorite was probably the Capture One video, uh, I thought, or the Capture One rendition of this image. I liked, I really liked that rendition. Um, also, um, I'll have a link so you could download this RAW file uh, to try it for yourself. And also I'll have all the gear info, camera settings, and exposure info listed as well. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>